it's time for the blindfold test. Okay. You're up for that. Um, yeah. We will, uh, we'll, we'll play a few tracks. Just put up your hand when, when, when you've heard enough and you're ready to, to talk about the music. Okay, sure. Now, sound good? Gonna lay down my heavy load. Down by the riverside. Oh, yes. Down by the riverside. You know. Down by the riverside. Gonna lay down my heavy load. Down by the riverside. You said it was no more. I ain't gonna study it was no more. Have you heard this music before? I haven't heard this particular version before. And I want to say it's like... Oh, maybe Sister Rosetta Tharp or yes, yes, yes. That, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So awesome. I happened to see a documentary on Sister Rosetta Tharp, and that came out in 2011 at the at VIF Vancouver Film oh. Festival. And my friend Kevin Mooney uh, said we got to go see this documentary, and I, and I really wasn't familiar with with her, like which is she was she was incredible like what a uh, she was revolutionary no nobody was doing what she what she did uh she was she influenced all the so-called pioneers of rock and roll she she was pre <laughs> chuck berry uh pre little richard elvis presley but they were all heavily influenced by her and she's she's not given her due in her in not in her lifetime yeah. She was only inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, I love her. I love I love her her singing style because it's like uh, super percussive and um, you know she's really got that that gospel you know sensibility. You can hear that she's you know has roots in gospel music. And she was revolutionary with the sound of distortion on her electric guitar. Yeah. She influenced Eric Clapton, uh, Jimi Hendrix. Don't you know, now this train is a clean train. Everybody riding in Jesus' name because this train is. All right, Don, one for one. Awesome. Okay, I'll call up the next one. There's no sun up. <laughs> Etta James. Super easy, yeah. Yeah, that's um, a great one. So stor obviously stormy, stormy weather. Etta, Etta James, um, it was recorded in 1960, but she certainly wasn't the first uh, artist to cover Stormy Weather, which was written in 1933. Okay. Obviously uh, one of the most um, I don't know popular jazz standards of all time. Um, do you have a Do you have a version of Stormy Weather that you like the best? <laughs> um, I mean, this one is like one of my favorites. Um, I also Dinah Washington ah. is a good one. Stormy weather. Just can't get my poor self together I'm weary all the time There's something about Dinah Washington's voice that I like. It's kind of like stormy weather. Like she's got this crazy <laughs> vibrato that's amazing. Um, but yeah, this one is, I, I remember getting this album. At last, yeah. this is classic. Yeah. She kind of bridged jazz, R&B, blues, and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, super versatile. Edda, she, uh, she was the opening act for the Rolling Stones in 1978 tour. Oh, that would have been so amazing. I never it, had the pleasure to see her live. Did you, have you ever seen her live? No, no. I, I don't remember her touring to, I mean, I'm sure she's played Vancouver, but um, 
not not that I can remember. We had uh, Cedar Walton as a A-band nightcap guest, and he worked with Etta quite a bit as her music director and her pianist. And um, I said to him, what would it take to get Etta uh, to come up and do one of these A-band nightcap gigs? He's like, not on the money you're paying me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like, okay, buddy. <laughs> Wasn't in the cards. Anyway, I'm a big fan and I've been, I was too easy, Don. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad you like, it's one of your favorite versions and I wanted to play some jazz for you, of course. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. This is so fun, Fiona. It, start, it starts quietly, so it does okay. it does grow. This is Ruthie Foster, right? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's hear a little bit of her anyway. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you wanna know about your true arrival. You wanna make real music. I'm just part A great song for today. It it's it was a great song when when she sang it in 2006. I think it came out. I think it was on the album Heal Yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh. Ruthie, we've had the pleasure on our stage many times. I think the world of her. I think she's one of the best vocalists I've ever heard in my life. Yes, agreed. your your paths must have crossed on with with Ruthie. Yeah. Um... Yes, I the first time I met Ruthie was actually when I was touring with Linda Tillery and we were kind of on the same festival circuit and the first time I heard her we were Calgary and we were like just you know having lunch and we heard her voice and we're like who the heck is that like <laughs> but replace heck with something else <laughs> and we literally like we're like just walking over to, the, to her stage. We're like, who is this person? Like, she's phenomenal. Um, and then the second time I met her was at CAP, was at the show. Yeah, it must have been 2007, maybe? Maybe after, maybe on tour with this record, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and um, and I remember just being like so in awe of her. And I think she'd just come with, it was her and Sid. It yeah, just, I remember that duo show, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and just being like so blown away and, and got, getting to, to chat with her afterwards. I was like, oh my God, like, you know super fangirling um we did we did a show with ruthie foster eric bibb and the campbell brothers at oh, yeah. uh, at the chan yeah. and everyone and it the campbell brothers needed to go last like you know it was a full band and they have such a big sound um yeah. but every every there were so many complaints we didn't get enough ruthie <laughs> Ruthie was very deferential that it was a triple bill and not taking more time that, than she should, but her fans were not happy. So it's like, I can't do that ever again. <laughs> like, they were all great. Everyone loved Eric Campbell Brothers, but you just need more Ruthie. That's all. <laughs> anyway, um, all righty. I, I, I don't know if I, I think you might get, this might be a, a clean sweep today. <laughs> oh, yes. Nervous. Yeah, are you nervous, really? Yeah. I mean, it. more excited, but this You're is nailing it. Okay. <laughs> the stakes are high, Fiona. I'm having fun. Yeah, good. You're getting them so fast, though. Like Ruthie didn't even have to sing. I guess. <laughs> So 
another man Keep your head Don't forget what your good book says Something changed Gonna come at last Now your crosses are Hey, it's Sean, Sean Boutet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you're expecting all women by the by the way we're going with this. That's what threw me off. I was like, I don't know if I I'm like, is this and then and then I heard the his little John isms. I'm like, okay. I know. Yeah, pretty, uh, a wonderful artist, John Boutte, and having you guys work together. Yeah, we did. Actually, the first time he came to... Universal Gospel Choir. Yeah. That was that show. Yeah. Yeah, and then he came the next year. Like, people just loved him so much that I think you brought him back the next year. My friend Jack Schuler had gone to New Orleans, and he came back from New Orleans, and he called me up and said, if you want, I saw the singer. He's just, he's just incredible and I, I'm gonna send you a burn copy of his CD. <laughs> yeah. I bought the CD. So I got this burn copy of John Boutte in the mail from Jack and it's like wow he's he's great. You know, I just yeah. send him an email out of the blue like John and I said would you like to come to Vancouver? He's like sure. <laughs> he was so agreeable to everything <laughs> and uh I don't know, Vancouver kind of adopted him. Like everyone loved John, this phenomenal New Orleans style singer. Um, his whole family is, he's come from this musical family. Mm -hmm. I went to New Orleans last January and um, I went there to do some studying and I was there with uh, my friend Carla Mundy and we we're um, part of this math, this like week long masterclass and while we were there, um, we were going to go see John and Todd. Um, and well, I th and then I think Todd was too sick. And he actually passed away. Yeah, he it's very away. sad. His, his yeah. beloved guitarist, wonderful guy who came with yeah. with John, of course, a, a few times. Yeah, and, and we, um, we were like, oh, I wonder if John is going to perform. He, he sang, John sang, and he, it was such, I'm getting like goosebumps thinking about it. Like he, um, he went on and he just had tears and the all, everyone came because everyone knew, like they wanted to, to be there to like support John, remember Todd, and John brought out Todd's chair. Oh, wow. Put it on stage and Whew. he just was like channeling something else it was it's it has been one of the most um exquisite shows i've ever seen and it you know it was sad it was joyful and at one point we were all people were singing along and he was like is there a choir here yeah. oh. <laughs> and um uh and and then someone was like no but we're from some of us were in the Universal Gospel Choir. Oh. Like, oh my God. And he was like, come and talk to me after. It was a really beautiful, um, beautiful night. A great way to remember Todd and um, a wonderful way to reconnect with him. He was so oh. joyous. Yeah. Well, I've never seen anyone emotionally invested in, in a song and the interpret his interpretations. Like he, he completely owns... The song and takes it over. He did yeah. a, a version of Annie Lennox's "Why." Oh, that just he it there it has a whole different meaning. The song he mm -hmm. somehow made it about Katrina, what was what it had what which was still fresh. Uh, so mm -hmm. the destruction of you know that horrendous um, you know New Orleans was on its knees to say the least, and um, he made that song about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> like he brought a whole different element to it. Very powerful performer, yeah. singer, and lovely guy. Yeah, lovely guy, lovely guy. All right, well, we're at the last tune. Okay. Four for four. <laughs> You're still up for one more? Yeah, this is so fun. 
And the fire that takes the kindling, it will not take me. The fire that takes the kindling will not take me. This Birds of Chicago, Allison. Birds of Chicago with Allison. John, you're the greatest blindfold ever. <laughs> As my grandma told me, this I saw. Though that I see. And the rain that floods the valley will not drown me. The rain that floods the valley will not drown me. The rain that floods the valley won't drown me. As my grandma told me. This I so though that I see. Well, I thought it might be fun to have a Birds of Chicago with, with Allie's vocals uh, being highlighted in this particular tune. It's a beautiful tune. Um, and uh, you, you guys just got to work together on the Tom Petty show. So. Yeah, that was great. And then I saw, uh, I saw them and Steve at Edmonton Folk Festival last summer after we did that show. It was like so great. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wow, that was that was incredible. I I uh, hope you enjoyed the blindfold as much as I enjoyed you Me guessing too. all the right. <laughs> John Boutte, I was like, oh, I have her this time. <laughs> you almost did. I almost was like, oh, I give up, and I was like, let me just listen to one more verse. Yeah, <laughs> that was good, Fiona. Really good. Well, I tried to do a little a little historical thing. I tried to pick some. Uh, really strong um, black artists that have sung resistance songs. Obviously, it's a difficult time, but it's also a revolutionary time. And um, mm. I, I, I wondered how you're feeling about the the protests and the movement. Do you feel like maybe this time uh, it'll make a difference? Mm. Will it change? I have hope that things will change and. Um, and that the change will be consistent and progressive. Um, and really, um, I don't know, I, I'm not sure. I, I have hope, but I also um, know that there are so many systems in place that um, don't want us to succeed. It's and a big fight. Uh, yeah. Um, but I do know that, you know, this is uh, a fight that Black people have been fighting and um, working against for, you know, hundreds of years. So um, I know that we're not going to give up. And uh, we just hope that we have some good allies who can really, um, really help. You and definitely, you definitely do. Like, I'm... Um at first, I think the rioting, it was scary. Like I think coming on the heels of COVID too, it's just like, yeah, what's going on with the world? It's just there. It just felt dangerous. But as as the movement progressed and went global, and there's so much peaceful, and there's and there are some changes that are happening. Like you know, yeah. it's it's becomes it's become a a, a very strong movement. So. I too, I'm hopeful that it will change the world and um, the virus is certainly changing the world. It's making us all uh, take, like you said, take a, take a pause and yeah. there is some re self reflection, um, world reflection. Yeah, definitely. I was chatting with a friend the other day and we were like, would things, you know, in terms of the movement, like it just seemed like the conditions were right um, to kind of catapult things a little further, and I was like, if the you know if we all weren't in lockdown and if there was no COVID, like would it have been as impactful? Would you know would George Floyd's death um, kind of um, started the you know reignite the fire? Uh, it's hard to say, but it's, it's, a, it's a fair question. Cause one thing I think the gift of this time um, has been just, yeah, self-reflection. And it's like, I think 
for me anyways, a recognition of what is important and what, um, what I want my life to be about and what I want to keep in my life and what I don't want to keep in my life. And really it's like people and freedom and the ability to be expressive and make music and love fiercely, you know, those things are, are so important. Beautifully put, Don. 